This video lesson highlights a few of the topics covered in Module 2, Course 2, Analytical Tools and Techniques. So one of the techniques we talked about in the course regarding managing a portfolio of different products was to use the Boston Consulting Product Matrix, which uses four quadrants. And once you place your different products into one of these four quadrants, it basically directs you as to the strategy on how you should manage those products. So at one extreme, you might have star products, which basically have very strong market growth and have a really good market share. You would want to invest heavily to solidify your position with those products versus products that might we might call dogs that have very low market share, low potential, and you don't want to really invest heavily, you may want to divest and get out of those products. And similar to the Boston Consulting Matrix, you can use the GE Business Screen to manage a portfolio of different kinds of businesses. And you would rate each business in terms of its attractiveness, things like market share, growth, innovation, future demand, as well as its position, its competitive position, things like brand awareness, ability to compete, talent, leadership, different strengths. And each business unit is shown as a circle within this matrix. And once again, this gives you an idea how to manage that business unit. And if you're in the red area, then you would want to divest from that business. And the green area of the matrix would be where you want to invest heavily to really solidify your market position with that business unit. And perhaps the most popular analytical model that professional people use is a SWOT, an assessment of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And you would look at the things that a company is good at and not good at. Those are strengths and weaknesses. They're internal to the organization. And things external to the organization would be opportunities and threats. And you may need to do some environmental scans to figure out what the opportunities and threats are. And we'll mention that on the next couple of slides here. And then to take a look at the external factors influence in a company, there are models like STEEP, S-T-E-E-P, social, technology, economic, ecology, and political that you can develop. And these are just categories to look at, to monitor. And you may break these down into subtopics, like maybe you need to look at demographic trends and how that impacts your business. That might be a subtopic, subtopic under social. And once you figure out that model, you have to have a recurring regular process to do this environmental scan and feed that into your strategic process, such as your SWOT. And when a company has to implement change across the entire company, uh, there is a model 7S that you can use to help you manage change. S, strategy, the company strategy. A company's organizational structure and flow, the company processes and systems. Then you have shared values in the middle that cuts across all the different areas. That's the beliefs and values communicated by senior management. Culture and style of the company. Then you have depth of skills, talents within the company, and the workforce composition and qualifications of the people. And those green lines, three green lines are at the top are the three areas that tend to be easy to identify and then the ones toward the bottom with the blue lines they tend to be a little bit harder to figure out and in chapter two of the course a simple technique we mentioned was to segment your customers into different groups for example eighty percent of the revenues for the company may come from twenty percent of your customers so not every customer is necessarily profitable uh, in the example here on the slide, we're just basically breaking out the the different customers by age groups for different two different products, the iPhone and the iPod. And since we have so much competition in the world, it's kind of important to maximize the value proposition of your products to customers. And you can kind of think of this within the buyer utility map, which is a six by six matrix. So what you really want to do is you kind of, by being unique with this value proposition, you kind of push some of the competition out. And you want to add value across the customer experience from initial purchase all the way across to when they dispose of the product. 
and there are six different levers, let's utility levers you can pull on to make that happen. The main value that the customer is going to get from what you do provide is the fact that the customer is more productive, they can accomplish something by purchasing and consuming your product. The second value proposition is it's simple. Is it easy for the customer to use? Then is it easy to buy and get help and submit feedback on the product? Then there's risk. Does that product help reduce some kind of risk for the customer? And is it fun and enjoyable to use? And finally, is the product sensitive to environmental impacts? And then in the final chapter of the course, we talked about the data and the information itself. For example, how you go about collecting data. And the most powerful way to actually do that would be face-to-face -face interviews because communication is so visual. But it requires people with very good interview skills, knowing what questions to ask, how to ask the questions. The use of surveys is also very important. So you want to design the surveys for maximum participation so you can get insights into how to manage the customers and the products. And in chapter three of the course, we also mentioned the fact that statistics is really useful when you have large volumes of data so you can get some kind of meaning out of the data and sample it to figure out what's happening within the overall population from a sample. And you can measure things like variation and distribution. Uh, the structure of data would be described in something called a data model, which we touch on in a future course within this module, by the way. And then we mentioned things like data profiling to improve the integrity of the data. And then to understand relationships, we mentioned things like correlation analysis and regression analysis.